behind me is insane. Ooh, doggies. This right here is a brand new 2021 Dodge Durango RT with a tow and go package. But does it actually tow and go? I'm gonna put it on the world's toughest towing test, the Ike Gauntlet with a 7,000 pound trailer to see if it's worth the money. If you've seen Ike Gauntlet runs before, you might be wondering where is Mr. Truck, where is Nathan or Roman? Well, because of the pandemic and also scheduling conflicts, I have to do this by myself. But I'm pretty happy to take this new Durango down the eye gauntlet, measure its braking performance when towing the trailer, and also show you all the data and all the gauges on the way up the mountain. So let's do it. Eighty-seven hundred pounds for Durango. That's a lot of towing capacity. Yes. I have no doubt that the engine can actually propel this load, but what about downhill performance? Can this system, this Durango, with its 8-speed automatic and tow haul mode, actually control my speed on the way down? As always, the downhill starts like this. I come out of the tunnel at 50 miles an hour, and I'm going to be counting brake applications. This is a proper competition for 2021, it's a Gold Hitch Awards. Um, for full-size crossovers and SUVs and as soon as I reach over 60 miles an hour so 61 I'm gonna apply my brakes and then I'm gonna count those brake applications like right now that's my number one if you have been watching TFL truck for a while you probably remember Frank the Hummer it's a 2003 Hummer H2 and it belongs to me and I just put it for auction on sale at no reserve at our new site tflbids.com so click on the link below in the description check out the auction and also check out the other vehicles we have for sale there tow and go is a brand new package that costs four thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars exactly and it's not just about towing so part of that package is actually this brake wheel and tire combination big brembo brakes that's really good for downhill driving and obviously these all-terrain tires which have pretty decent grip so actually let's see how they work on the downhill okay here's my second brake application so at the top of the mountain it did downshift but not as aggressively as I hoped so maybe this 5.7 liter Hemi uh, um, and the transmission tuning itself is not gonna help me too much already two brake applications this is my third this tow and go package though gives you much more than just a hitch and maybe a transmission cooler it brings with it the suspension the adaptive shocks from Bill Stein and the ride actually right now on the way down the ride is just spot on uh, this trailer weighs just over 7,000 pounds. It's the same trailer weight we're using for all SUVs. And yeah, I don't feel like there's a trailer behind me at all. Uh, it's really easy to tow with a Durango. The trailer I'm towing is a standard trailer for this competition. It's loaded to just about 7,000 pounds with water ballast. And it's a very large horse trailer from Cimarron thanks to our friends at Transwest Truck Trailer RV. It's about 24 feet long, it's about seven and a half feet wide. And let me show you inside. Once again, this is the same trailer and I actually emptied this water. So the blue barrels have basically nothing in them. The main ballast is in the square water coat and the tongue weight is set at about 740 pounds, about 10%, which is perfect. Okay, so with the full weight of the trailer, the height up to here is about 31 and a half. I measured it empty, unladen, at about 33. So this is one and a half inches of squat. It's not terrible, actually. What I'm thinking is, if you want more control on the way down, you may need to actually get a Durango with a larger displacement engine, like a 6.4 SRT, or of course the new Hellcat. They all tow the same amount, but maybe those bigger displacement engines 
uh, may help you slow down just a little bit more with back pressure. That's number seven. Usually in a half ton truck with a slightly higher uh, trailer weight, 10 applications is what we've been seeing recently. Um, that's not a great result. Eight is a little bit better. But when we actually took a Suburban on this mountain with the same trailer, the Suburban did six brake applications. And the Durango RT Tow & Go is currently at eight. So performance downhill is a little bit, tiny bit worse. I have to hit my brakes again. That's number nine. All right, so I am done with the downhill. It was very controllable, very easy. The suspension is awesome, no trailer sway. Nine brake applications. So not a great result. A little bit, uh, a little bit worse than the six brakes applications in the Suburban. Let's go up the mountain now. As always, we're using the Gen Y heavy duty hitch, height adjustable. And now you might be saying, wait a minute, Andre, isn't the Durango a crossover unibody construction vehicle? Why are you comparing it against the Suburban or Tahoe and other truck-based SUVs? Well, I'm doing it because currently the Durango is the largest three-row crossover SUV that FCA has. The Grand Wagoneer is not here yet. That's gonna be next year. And also, it's very powerful and very capable. That's why I'm gonna test it. But I had to raise the hitch a little bit because the Durango rides low. Let's check out the beast within, shall we? It's hard to imagine that this 5.7 liter Hemi V8 is not actually a most powerful engine option here in the Durango. The power rating is 360 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission. The torque flight, which is in many other vehicles from FCA. In fact, this is very similar to what's in the Ram 1500, just a little bit different tuning. This is what I love about Dodge. When they make high performance vehicles, they're very serious. And this hood has functional air vents to extract air and also intake air. Better be careful, it's a Hemi. package is performance exhaust it really lets this Hemi uh, sing so I'm gonna cross the starting line right now hammer down reset my trip meter let's do this <laughs> did you hear that okay the acceleration is still going uh, I need to reach 60 which is the speed limit there. Okay, so that wasn't as quick as I've seen in some other trucks, but this 5.7 liter is still no slouch. The Ike is the world's toughest towing test because 7% grade, 8 mile stretch of highway, total uh, maximum elevation is 11,158 feet above sea level. That's over 2 miles above sea level. Engines struggle for power up here, and you need every bit of help. Thankfully, this 5.7 is breathing a little bit easier, thanks to this exhaust system. I'm in tow hole mode, and I'm maintaining 60, no issue yet. On the inside, the Durango for 2021 has been updated and refreshed, as you can see by this big 10.1 inch diagonal touchscreen. It's actually powered by the latest Uconnect 5 system and it's actually Android based and it's very snappy. It's fast, high resolution. You can load performance pages very very quickly. Um, everything is at hand. Settings etc. And there are lots of shortcuts. For example I can uh, call out the rear camera. This Durango does not have 360 degree camera view. And actually the resolution on this camera doesn't look very great on this high resolution screen. So I don't think the cameras were upgraded. 
The other good thing is this control panel down here. Very easy to understand, lots of redundancy for your heated seat, ventilated steering wheel, heater, your climate controls, and tow haul mode. How simple is this? Snow, tow, sport, track. This also comes as part of a tow and go package. This is an integrated trailer brake controller. It's awesome. I don't have to mess around with an additional aftermarket controller, but it's a little bit hidden behind the steering wheel. It's by my knee. It's on the right side, which is good, but it's a little bit hidden underneath. Still, I'm very happy to have this. Now, another thing you get with this package, tow and go, is kind of performance steering. Right now, of course, I'm not in track mode or sport mode. I'm just in tow haul mode. But the steering feels pretty good. It's precise. And this is what I remember about Durango RTs of the past. They always have very direct, very good steering. The eye gauntlet is biting. It's letting me know it's here because my foot is planted to the floor. Right now, I'm doing about 59. There, 60. So I'm still maintaining speed, but it's getting hard. I gotta tell you, when I first um, started this test, I was a little concerned. I thought this RT is gonna be too stiffly sprung and the shocks would be just very firm uh, because it's kind of a sport-oriented SUV, but it's not the case. Um, it's adaptive uh, damper system from Bill Stein. It's wonderful and there is no sway whatsoever. It is an independent rear suspension. Of course, independent front end as well. So the towing capacity on this package is 8,700 pounds, which is basically second in class, but 1,200 pounds of total payload, that's not really the best in class. It could be better. All right, how much does it all cost? Well, this Durango RT starts at 47,905 bucks before destination. So. With that, it's just around 49,000, which is reasonable for a V8 three-row vehicle, right? But then you have to add about five grand for the tow and go package, if you want to tow seriously, which this has. Then it has a technology package, advanced brake assist, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control for another 2,400 bucks. Also has rear DVD system, premium interior group, it has a Harman Kardon stereo system, blind spot with cross path detection. Total MSRP, 66,650. So, you know, I don't think I would get all the options, but the tow and go, I think I would get. Now the mirrors uh, could be better. There's not quite enough reach on these um, side mirrors. I can still see down the side of the trailer, but I want a little bit more reach. I'm monitoring the gauges. This is a new Uconnect 5 system. It's very quick, very sharp, big screen. Uh, right now, what I'm seeing is, is that the oil temp is getting hot. Um, I've seen this before on a Hemi. Uh, coolant is 233, transmission is 203. So the transmission is just nice and cool. All right, guys, I'm almost at the top. I believe this will be a perfect run as far as time. Stopping the clock now. 7.49, 4.7 mpg. So actually, uh, the Durango actually went up the mountain a little bit, tiny bit quicker than the Suburban. And according to the trip meter, quite a bit better fuel efficiency which is 4.7. All right, so let me give you my subjective score so we know exact point number for this Durango. The maximum number of points any truck can get on the Ike is 100, that's a perfect score. But of course, we don't see that. And on the downhill, the Durango scored 16 points because of nine brake applications. On the way up, time was pretty much perfect, 25 points. MPG was pretty good for this segment, so it got 18 and a half points there. So what about subjective scores? We usually judge the following way. Towing technology, squat, suspension handling, mirrors, and interior comfort. And my total subjective score is 21 points. How come? Well, I took one point off for the towing tech because it doesn't have 360 degree cameras. It also doesn't have some of the latest tech features like light check for the trailer or 
uh, trailer hookup checklist, etc. I took two points off for the mirrors. I think the mirrors could be a little bit better. This is a towing package, so the mirrors need to be a little bit uh, wider. Interior, I took another point off uh, because it's the driver position is comfortable, but overall it's a little bit cramped for three rows. It's on the smaller size as far as those SUVs are concerned. And drum roll, the total I got that score, 80 and a half points for the Durango RT Tow and Go. So there you have it. Yes, it can tow and go, although the downhill performance can be a little bit better. And I can tell that overall this Durango is riding on an aging platform, although a lot of the components on it are brand new and very good. As always, go back to tfltruck.com for all the latest news, views, and independent and honest reviews.